Hello Internet! Welcome back to one more video of Basel Spot Live with this, this version of this Gravity Team, I guess. Um, from next week, we will try and change things up. Um, I don't know if it'll be a completely different team, not sure I've got that much time. Um, but certainly, if it's Gravity, it will be a slightly different version to this one, just because um, Kiram has been a little bit disappointing, hasn't it? Hasn't really done anything at all this week. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know, the Sceptile is... Actually, the Sceptile's been pretty good, to be honest. So, um, Lele, I've always wanted to be Scarfed as well. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Because it's Friday. Uh, it is MBL stuff, again, uh, <laughs> happening around this kind of weekend. Uh, today, Friday, the Team Builder should be on Cybertron's channel. And this week's Battle should be on my channel tomorrow. So, fingers crossed everything goes according to plan, and uh, we'll get that done. This week, we're playing against... Uh, Yeet Down, which is Shofu the Beatdown and GE Cybertron, obviously my my MBL partner, and uh, hopefully we can uh, win some more games. But uh, hopefully we can finish you know finish this week on a high with this team, as Battle Spot seems to be taking its time. Clearly, no one wants to play against Gravity, do they? I don't know. We're not even that like that high. We have been higher. We've been knocked down a bit, so, um, I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to find an opponent. There will surely be other people playing Battle Spot right now. So, come on, Battle Spot, please give us someone. Maybe it's time for the magic tape measure. That's your cue, Battle Spot. There we go. But, <laughs> <laughs> Why did I do that? I, I was fully expecting to like not find any opponents, just stop recording, and and um, no one would have ever had to see that. But here we go, I'm stuck with this now. So, <laughs> so, <coughs> so this guy has got a Lugia, which is interesting, and a Lele, which is not so interesting, an Incinerov, which is not in any way, shape, or form interesting. Um, a Kyogre, which is, uh, you know, not, not <laughs> all right, shut up, Barry, what's going to happen? Um, so the Lugia is interesting. I'm wondering how much, like, a Hex will do to it. Do we actually want Kiram anywhere? Maybe not, because he's got an Incineroar and a Ferrothorn. Um, I think we do want to go with Saber Lion Gengar. I mean, that's a pretty straightforward lead. I think we do want, ooh, yeah, I think we do want the Groudon, just because we need some way to hit the, the Ferrothorn. And get rid of the, the weather's always nice. But. Do we go with Kiram? Or do we go with Sceptile? Now if there's ever any battle where I'm thinking Kiram is maybe going to come. Then it's probably this one. But I'm still leaning towards Sceptile. Just because he's got a Lele. I can activate my Unburden. If I is a Scarf Kyogre. Then I will still hopefully be faster. Well I will if I'm Unburden boosted. Uh, and hopefully put it to sleep. And I was thinking maybe the Kiram could be nice because obviously damage on Lugia, Lugia is not the biggest threat, but damage on uh, Kartana as well. I've got Focus Blast on Sceptile as well, which I haven't actually been able to use on a Kartana yet. So maybe this is the battle. Maybe this is the time I do get to Focus Blast into a Kartana. We will see, won't we? So Save Light Gengar. Um, I'm interested if he does bring the Lugia actually. Okay, so into the Rock Kartana. Just because, I mean, I don't know, I've got a Kiram, I've got a Gengar, it is pretty threatened by my team. But what's Kartana going to do here? Okay, worst case scenario, it goes for a Tailwind. So I'm going to Gravity. And... I want to put the Kartana to sleep. If I do that, I'm resigning Gengar to being knocked off. Kartana might not Tailwind. I'm going to Hypnosis into the into the Kartana. If it's Focus Sashed, then it will survive a Hex, obviously, too. Uh, nothing can take a Hypnosis. So, he's maybe expecting a Fake Out from my Sableye here. Maybe. But Lele's got a guaranteed Sleep Turn next turn. Again, I am losing my, my Sash on Gengar. Like, Gengar might as well, like in most of these games, Gengar might as well have 2 HP, to be honest. <laughs> oh, 1 HP with a Focus Sash. Really, you don't need 2 D for a Focus Sash. 
and the knockoff into the Gengar. Yeah, okay. And there's the Sash. So, we don't know what type of Lele this is. If it's Scarfed, then I would quite like to just erase it from the field now. But it might not be Scarfed. And I do quite like ooh, Gengar for the Katana. But we've got Sceptar for the Katana as well, maybe. So I think we Hypnosis into the Incineroar, but which one of these do we bring in? I think we bring in the Groudon, don't we? Just because that does threaten the Incineroar um, with a, a one-shot the next turn, and we don't have to mess around with sleep turns. So Lily can't wake up this turn. Incineroar can't wake up this turn because we're putting it to sleep this turn. So if the Lele isn't Scarfed, we could potentially get two knockouts. If the Lele is Scarfed, he would need a first turn wake, and... It's not scarfed because I've seen Gengar go first. So both of them taking their first turn to sleep here, but we can literally just go for a hex and a Preston's blades and knock them both out unless they switch. And if they do switch, they're taking lots of damage from Preston's blades and um, going to be at risk of being put to sleep next turn as well. So the late actually wakes up and goes for a protect. Okay, so no. No double knockouts. Okay, so this got interesting then now, because he will bring his Katana in, surely, next. So, okay, first turn wake is still in the game. If he didn't get a first turn wake there, I would have been confident that I would have just, you know, rolled, rolled through his team there, basically. But, now we're not looking, I mean, we're looking good, but we're not looking as great as we were. So, of course it's Cartana. So he's probably got Kyogre in the back, hasn't he? Yeah. So now I can put one of these to sleep. And Groudon stays in. Or Groudon switches, expecting a Leaf Blade. I think Groudon switches into Sceptile. Just because he probably has got the Kyogre in the back. And we'll Hypnosis into the Katana. I'm just wor very wary of him protecting the Katana here and knocking Gengar out. But if he does that, that's still not the worst case scenario for me. But it's not looking amazing because the Lele is a threat for us. So Katana goes to sleep. If he targets the, the Sceptile, then we have got a special... Defense boost, but he's surely just knocking out the uh, Gengar here. The Gengar is the issue for him. But no, he's gone for a Psychic Interceptile, and we'll survive that thanks to his own terrain. So, well, hey. Um, so now, we finally, do we, get to Focus Blast into a Katana and can Hypnosis the Lele? Is this finally happening? Do we get to Focus Blast this Katana? Like, of course, the, the Lele sleeps there, but... I'm just worried if it's a Focus Sash, Katana, and he gets a first turn wake. So it is a Focus Sash, Katana. And he doesn't get the first turn wake, thankfully. But gravity has ended. And we're still not looking in a... Not looking in the... In the, I mean, we're looking okay. I mean, I can't try and... Can't really... Complain too much, can I? Um, but... Like, if we sludge went to Linter the Lele, then it probably survives, doesn't it? Kartana has got a 50-50 chance of waking up here. Because we've got Groudon in the back, his Kartana is a big issue for us. So we do need to get rid of it. So I think I actually Leaf Storm into the Kartana here. And just Sludge Bomb into the Lele, which will put it in range of anything. Okay, so if this is... Oh, it's Lugia. Ooh. So now Gengar's very important. But it's probably going down. So we've broken the multi-scale on Lugia. I was sure he would have the Kyogre in the back. So I'm not expecting this to knock it out. Doesn't... And Psychic will knock out my Gengar. Okay, so... This just got... 
interesting. Okay, so leftovers on Lugia, so we're still going to have his, his multi-scale after next turn. Okay, then. Um, I mean, if I had faint on Sableye, we could just faint into the lake and knock it out. If he swaps into the Katana, faint into the Katana and knock it out. But we don't. And we need, really, the gravity to hit things like the Lugia, don't we? I mean, I, ideally, he sacrifices the Lele here, because then I can quash next turn. I think I'm going to go for a... I'm going to gravity here, but does the Lele target the Sceptile, or does it swap, switch out into Katana, or does it target my... the other one that I didn't say just then? <laughs> Um, either the, the sector, which one's it target, basically? Um, okay, I'm gonna go for a grass whistle into Lugia, and I'm gonna go for a gravity here. So, Lily, okay, so we called this turn correct. So, few, at least we've got that. We still need to hit this grass whistle, too. It's 91% accurate, which we do. I don't know, this turned into a scary game. Like, as soon as I saw the the right-hand slot switch, it was the Katana there, wasn't it? I thought, oh, it's just the, the Kyogre coming in. It's taking a, a Lee Storm. Fantastic. But, no. Um, so now we have got gravity we can't miss. We are at minus two special attacks. So I'm not going to risk a Focus Blast um, not, not, not getting the KO on the Lele. I'm going to go for a Leaf Storm into... Um, the Lele here, just to make sure it does knock it out. The reason why I might have gone for a Focus Blast is to conserve my special attack, but I am just making sure I knock out the Lele here. And Lugia, what do I do to you? I might try and taunt it, or I could just foul play it. I think I like the idea of taunting it, because it doesn't really do too much offense-wise. Okay, so we can't taunt it now, because it's... Well, we can taunt... Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Be quiet, Barry. Um, he will have his Psychic Terrain next turn. That's what I'm trying to say. And the Katana was the bigger threat for my, my Groudon. It was asleep, but it was the 50-50 roll on if it woke up, wasn't it? So, uh, I'm glad I've got that out of the way. Um, yeah, so I, I thought I couldn't taunt the thing there because Psychic Terrain would come up. But Psychic Terrain's coming in now. Um, Luki's obviously grounded, so is affected by the Psychic Terrain now, so I can't taunt it. So, Sableye's doing nothing here, aside from foul playing into the Lugia. And Sceptile, uh, minus four, is still going to knock out the Lele here with a Leaf, with a leaf Slot. But I'm, I'm sure the Lele's going to protect here, but I don't think that's a massive issue. Maybe it is a massive issue, because then he'll get... Yeah, then he'll... Like, if the Lugia wakes up and knocks out my... Um, Sceptile with a, an Aero Blast. That'd be nice to see. Which looks like it is happening. A Hurricane. Why would you have Hurricane instead of Aero Blast? And he targets a Sableye. So he's not getting foul played. He is confusing me, but also ejecting me into Groudon. What a weird game. What a weird game this is. Why? I mean, Hurricane is more powerful, isn't it, than Aero Blast? But I suppose he has got Kyogre on his team as well. But, come on, you want to see the animation, don't you? You want the Aero Blast animation and those lovely critical hit chances, too. So, we'll Leaf Storm again, 100% accurate in gravity into the Lily. And, do we Precipice Blades or do we Sword Stance here? I think we're Precipice Blades just because we don't want, like, a Hurricane Confusion. And he gets a double protect. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. And a Psy Shock, okay. So now he targets my Sceptile. So that is annoying. That is very annoying, because Sableye and Groudon versus just an 80% Lugia, I think I'm fine. But now he's got this 
la lay. That was a annoying turn. Let's see what happens here then. If Groudon's faster than Lele, fantastic. We can't quash anything here because we are still in gravity, aren't we? Yeah, for one more turn. So we've got to, we've got to foul play into Lugia. And I don't think we protect Groudon here. I think we just attack with it. So Lugia is the fastest thing on the field. Sableye avoids the attack. How does Sableye avoid the attack? We're in gravity. We're in gravity. Aren't we? We're in sun. We're in the sun. The lovely sun has saved us there. <laughs> wow. Okay. So here's, here's a question that I was asking myself. Um, last week at some point. Uh, I think it was in the comments actually on one of the videos. Um, if, like, which has priority, um, the accuracy stat, the, you know, percentage, whatever, or weather-based accuracies. Now, that tells me weather-based accuracies have priority because we were in gravity and he missed a hurricane. So either, like, I'm not, please tell me if you know in the description how this works. Either um, the weather takes ultimate priority and that was a 50% chance to hit the hurricane, or um, that was 50% chance to hit the hurricane and then there was the gravity boost, which would put it up to, um, well, like 88, like I'm just guessing, around 88% sort of area, that kind of area, in which case it was lucky for him. Um, but either way, I'm appreciative of the, um, of the miss there. If he didn't miss... Uh, he would have knocked out the Sableye, Gravity would have ended the next turn, and so we would have had to have Fire Punched into the Lugia, which wouldn't have knocked it out. Yeah, I think that miss, I think that miss has saved us, so we'll take it. And this guy, is this a Spanish guy that was highly rated and uh, disconnected on us yesterday, was it? Um, I think it might be. So, let's see if he has got anything for me because I'm pretty sure he led Dialga Incineroar yesterday but now he knows what I'm up to I think I deduced that the Kaiga was not scarfed as well which is good information to have so I'm going to go Sableye Gengar definitely Groudon and I used Sceptile last time I'll use Sceptile again can take advantage of his terrain and Put things to sleep. We didn't get to... Oh, did we? Did we focus blast the Kartana last game? Did we get to do that? I feel like something happened to, to stop that. I can't remember. Did we? Maybe we did. And it was Focus Ash, wasn't it? Okay, so we, we finally... <laughs> finally clearly wasn't, wasn't a very big scratch to that itch because I can't remember doing it. <laughs> so I wonder if we'll get to focus blast into, the, into this one. But I'm expecting him to lead somewhat differently, because it just didn't work out for him last game. And this game he has led differently. So, fair enough. But... Am I concerned? Well, Dialga is slower than Kyogre. That doesn't tell us the item on the Kyogre. Like, I'm pretty sure yesterday, the Presbyce Blades did just over half to the Kyogre, which tells me it's got bulk in it. I'm pretty sure. So I don't think that is a Scarf Kyogre. So I'm going to Gravity here, and I'm going to Hypnosis into the Dialga as well. He, if he's got Protect on Dialga, I think he protects his Dialga here. Okay, maybe there's no Protect then. So Sableye will be going down now, and I will be losing the Sash on Gengar. Yeah, so no, no Scarf on the, on the Kyogre. So we're going to be taking like 199% of damage this turn. Yeah, Sableye. Actually, no, we're not, because he used Origin Pulse instead of Water Spout. And uh, Sableye is EV'd to take a Weather Boosted Origin Pulse. So, and th that took it reasonably well as well. So, that's a fair way off Modest Max Special Attack. So, obviously, we're, we're bringing the Groudon now. And now it gets tricky, because the Kyogre can protect...
but I kind of want to sword stance here. Like, it's a very obvious hypnosis into the Kyogre. Very obvious. So surely he protects that slot. But if I just double into the Dialga, he can't trick her. Is it greedy to sword stance here? Or do I literally just attack into the Dialga? Because Groudon will still take a, a chunk of damage here. He has got Incineroar. You know, I'm not going to Sword Stance. I'm just going to double into the Dialga again. I think the Kaiga will protect. He doesn't have to, though, I don't think. Yeah, he hasn't. Okay, so this looks um, a little bit bad because my Groudon is going to be taking a lot of damage here. But, and Gengar will be going down. But, um, yeah, there is a 2 hit KO just on Kyogre, unless there's some, some rolls there. But I've denied Trick Room. Which was the, the biggest concern. Like, I could have played around with the rolls there. With, um, you know, him not waking up first turn. But I feel like if he did trick room there, if he woke up first turn, and if he did trick room there, then it would have been game over, pretty much. So in comes Sceptile. Now I can start putting things to sleep again. And it's Kartana. Okay. So, I think... Like, it looks risky, doesn't it? Is this a roll on the Kyogre? Possibly. Um, but I'm gonna, I, I think I have to go for it. And the Grass Whistle into the Kartana. Because if it is, okay. Incineroar? Tapu Lily? Okay, I'll, that's fine. That's reasonable. Because if it is Focus Sash, uh, I don't want to just Focus Blast into it and... You know, and nothing happened, basically. So 91% accurate, Leaf, um, Grass Whistle, does hit. Nice. And both of his Pokémon are going to be taking damage here. Tapu Lily does take a lot of damage here. Hmm. So we've got Sableye in the back, haven't we? I think we do want to preserve Groudon. But then again, we have got Sceptile, haven't we? Which doesn't necessarily win one on one against. I mean, if we hit a Leaf Storm, then it, win, it, then it wins, doesn't it? As long as you haven't got a drop. So, how is the safest play? What is the safest move to make here? I think the safest move to make here is just stay in an attack, actually. I'm going to press this blade here and focus blast into the katana, because if katana goes down, I'm fine here. Worst case scenario, he switches the katana out. Okay, so we focus blast the katana, yay! So that's going down. If he attacks and knocks out my Groudon, fair enough. Um, I've got Sceptile in gravity to... Oh, well, we outspeed anyway. We've got Sceptile in gravity, which will always hit our Leaf Storm on the... Um, Kyogre and knock it out. So if the Lily was faster there, if he knocked out the Groudon, fine, Sceptile beats Kyogre in gravity. Um, if he knocked out the Sceptile there, then it would have been single target damage on the Kyogre and definitely not a roll in gravity as well. So um, either way, either way we won the game just by staying in and attacking there. So uh, good. And we've got, yeah, one more turn of gravity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Swap into Sableye and Leaf Storm into this Kyogre. Because Leaf Storm will definitely knock it out from here. Like, worst case scenario, it's a Rindo Berry and it survives. Uh, Groudon comes back in and we get the Sun. And, um, you know, you know, 85% chance we win from there as well. But, um, yeah. So, there we go. It, like, if, if this wasn't the person that disconnected on us, then, like, apologies. You know, but... Um, I think I think he might have been the one yesterday just connected on us. Uh, he might have been. I think he was actually. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> There's a, a random best of three with um, this is a Spanish person done over two days. Um, so let's do one more game. Hopefully we can finish on a, a lovely note because it has honestly gone a lot better than I thought it would. Um, but really, the work has literally just been done by these first four, hasn't it?
Lele has hardly done anything this week, and Kieran has done pretty much literally nothing this week, aside from uh, the very first game on Monday, where, um, like, we hit Blizzard out of gravity. <laughs> um, in a game that we probably should have lost. But when I watched that back, um, he did get a double protect, didn't he? Um, which made things tricky for us. I think it was that game, anyway. He did something... No, he got a burn, actually. It wasn't a double protect. It was a burn on my uh, Gengar. Which uh, finished it off with a Flare Blitz, was it? Or it was one of those 10% ones. But um, anyway, whatever. Um, let's look for one more game and finish... Uh, well, we're going to be finishing positive in this episode either way, aren't we? But hello, Manuel from Italia with a Stack Attacker and a Smurgle. He has got three potential wide guards on this team. And I do not have Feint on Tapu Lele. On her... On, um, that'd, be, that'd be special, wouldn't it? I don't have Feint on um, <laughs> Sableye. <laughs> like, here you go, Tapu Lele. Have a move that you can never use. Um, okay. No Kyogre, which is somewhat of a relief. Like, it feels like everyone has had a Kyogre, doesn't it? Like, li almost literally everyone's got a, an Incineroar, but Kyogre doesn't seem that far behind. But, yeah, I mean, I think, I think this week it's literally been a case of, um, I wish I had faint instead of foul play. I mean, foul play did knock out the Lugia, didn't it? But let's just try and, let's think what we're going to do here, actually, instead of, instead of faffing around. Um, so we'll go with these. I mean, this, this lead, save like Gengar, does look very good against that. We can taunt that, um, we threaten that, and that, and that. The stack attacker and the Incineroar is the uh, worst thing that we could come against. So we do want Groudon, but we do want some way of getting around the um, wide guard too. So we're going to go in with Sceptile as well to put to sleep any of the wide guarders. We don't need Lele because he hasn't got Finny or Coco. So again, it's just these four doing the business. I am worried about him trick rooming with stack attacker. I mean, this is a... It looks like a common team, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure this is, like, the, the first sort of common team that started doing the rounds at the beginning of the format. And he's led with good old Smurgle Xerneas. Right. So what do we do, then? Because if he geomances... If he geomances... This is just going to be... <laughs> this is going to be a loss, isn't it, straight away? Um, because like surely he goes for a follow me here. Like surely he goes for a follow me here. Can we play this game without gravity? If I taunt the Smurgle here. I'm gonna go for a gravity. And I'm going to go for a Hypnosis into the Smurgle. So Smurgle does go for a Follow Me. So he has got a guaranteed Sleep Turn next turn. And if he doesn't attack, I have still got my Sash on Gengar. But he is bound to be Geomancing here. And that's obviously, you know, not something that you ever want to be dealing with. Oh, it's just gone for a Dazzling Gleam. So I'm glad I did... Uh, gravity there instead of trying to taunt the Smurgle. Because I thought, my thinking there was, he's, he's bound to go for a follow me, isn't he? So a gravity hypnosis um, basically puts the Smurgle out of commission for at least, at least one more turn. Which one do I bring in then? Groudon or Sceptile? Because... Either way, I think I do want to be sludge bombing into the Xerneas. I'm going to go into Groudon, because he can't wake up with Smurgle this turn, so he can't wake up with Wide Guard. And if he does want to swap his Xerneas into his uh, Poison Resist, his Stack Attacker, it's going to be taking a Prestus Blade to the bricks. So we'll Prestus Blade here. I'm tempted to double into the Smurgle. I ve I'm very tempted to double into the Smurgle here. 
but I'm just want to play safe with Xerneas. Like, Xerneas surely protects here, yeah. But I'm doing this because Smurgle can't wake up this turn, and um, has only got a 1 in 3 chance of waking up next turn. He still hasn't broken... Oh, he has broken the sash on Gengar, hasn't he? Okay, so... Yeah, we we do need the Smurgle to stay asleep for one more turn then. Because he's trying to wake up. He will be going for a follow me, I would imagine. But we'll just go... I don't think we have any choice. We're going to go for a uh, Sludge Bomb and Presbyte's Blade. Yeah, because if... I'm thinking, do I go for a Hypnosis? Like, if the Smurgle wakes up, I just knock it out straight away so I get no mileage out of my Hypnosis. So I'm just going to double into this. Hope the Smurgle stays asleep. Be a sleepy little dog, please, Smurgle. Nice. Okay, so Smurgle does stay asleep. So this should be a knockout on Xerneas. With the combination of attacks, I mean. That's a pretty frail Xerneas as well, actually. Yeah, it looks like he was banking on waking up that turn with Smurgle. Because if he went for a follow me, then the Xerneas isn't getting sludge bombed. If he went for a wide guard, it's not getting precipice bladed. And I needed both of those attacks to uh, knock out the Xerneas here. But, sorry Xerneas. You know I, I love you dearly, but not when I'm playing against you. And not when I don't have my Volcarona with me either. So, both of them go down. Uh, game absolutely isn't over yet. We'll have to see what he's got. I mean, I'm feeling okay because I have still got gravity for um, one or two more turns. I mean, I've still got Sceptile in the back. It is Lunala. And Incineroar or Stack Attacker? It is Stack Attacker. Hmm. Is that... On this team, I'm pretty sure it was a... Safety Goggle Stack Attacker, wasn't it? So... Oh, we've got two more turns of Gravity, which is good. Like, it's either Focus Sash or Safety Goggle Stack Attacker. And I'm leaning towards, I think it's Safety Goggles, but... Um, it could be. It could be either. I think I do go for a Precipice Blade, because that does force him to Wide Guard. And I am going to go for a Hypnosis into Lunala, so we can try and do the Hex thing, um, and try and potentially one-shot it. I'm pretty sure that suspects Lunala as well. This only goes wrong if the Stack Attacker is Focus Sashed. Like, how weird, like, just thinking about that, especially from last year, a Focus Sash Stack Attacker. Well, he's not gone for a Wide Guard. So if this is a Focus Sash Stack Attacker, then um, things could get sticky. But we're breaking the Shadow Shield, so we're not really going get, to get to do the Hex thing again. And I don't know. I mean, if there's not like the Stack Attack in this game over, but maybe it is a Focus Sash. Oh, it's not. Okay. So, all right. Simple as that, then. So this game pretty much came down to if Smurgle woke up first turn, then, I suppose, didn't it? Let's, I mean, he's probably going to forfeit, but I'll put Sceptile in anyway. And we'll get to do um, the somewhat Hex thing into Lunala as well. Uh, he's just letting us. I appreciate that. Manuel, I remembered your name. And the Hex, which is going to knock my out. Base power, what is it? 130. You're right. <laughs> so, uh, there we go. You know, what a nice way to uh, finish the week. Did we win all the... We actually won all the games as well, didn't we, today? So, um... Yeah, I mean, a flattering video again. Um, I will change things for next week. Um, there will be something different. You know, I don't think it'll be a completely different team, uh, depending on how much time I've got to try and build something. I don't think I've got much time. Um, so maybe it'll be a slightly edited version of um, this gravity team as well. So something a bit different. You know, I'll, I'll come up with something. But, you know, I do hope you've appreciated this video. I hope you've enjoyed the whole week. Um, please watch the NBL battle tomorrow. I'm sure you will, you know, with Cybertron against um, Shofu Beatdown and uh, GE. So, fingers crossed it goes well. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow and then next week. So, goodbye for now.